emergency broadcast. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again? Hello, YouTube and Preppers. This is the Comms Prepper and the Comms Prepper Helper. Hi, Preppers. And we're up here in the shack here at the homestead, and we're going to do a video about high-speed multimedia mesh technology or broadband technology for amateur radio. Now, we did a video on this this morning. I got it edited and posted up to the website or up to the YouTube channel, and a viewer came in and pointed out a, a critical flaw in my video. So, to that viewer, thank you. I went ahead and took that video down, and I'm going to make that video again because the last thing I want to do is give you guys bad information. So, we're going to shoot this video over, and it's been a long time coming. I got a lot of PMs on this saying, hey, can you do a video about MASH? Uh, have you done one? Have you used it? And... I'm new to this, but I bought some used routers on eBay. We got the software loaded in them, and we're going to go ahead and try to show you what I have here set up, and at least a, a concept or an idea I have of how this could be deployed for emergency communications during a disaster or something. So what high-speed mesh is, is Linksys routers that have their operating system replaced with an amateur radio operating system. Now, channel one on Linksys routers actually shares frequencies with the 13 centimeter band of the amateur radio service. These guys wrote this software and figured out how they could convert a old Linksys router into a 13 centimeter amateur radio to do high speed data transfers. So I actually bought three routers but I'm going to demo two up here. I have two laptops connected. And how these routers work is the wireless piece of the routers see each other and map out a web of nodes. These are actually individual nodes and they build on each other so you could keep adding nodes and you'd have redundant paths to other nodes for passing data communications. Now the configuration I have set up here that I'm going to show you what I'm doing is I have a laptop connected to a node. The wireless piece of the router is connected to another node which is connected to another laptop. Because this is amateur radio now, when you put this software in there, you have to have an amateur radio license and your communications has to be Part 97 compliant with the amateur radio rules. And one of those rules is no encryption and no commercial activity. So it has to be consistent with the amateur radio rules that are listed out in Part 97. So in the configuration I have here is I'm using the amateur radio program Packlink from winlink.org, which actually provides a local POP3 server. So what I set up was a little email server on this laptop here with the Packlink program from winlink.org and then I'm running a POP3 client over here on this side so anybody who was in this mesh could get an email address off of this Packlink server, what they call tactical addresses and what the addresses I set up were MeshPC01 and MeshPC02 and that will allow any participant in the mesh that has a tactical call sign on this little mail server to exchange emails between each station. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera here and actually show you the items I got set up here. And again, I apologize for the camera work. I don't have the best tripod. I'm actually going to try to slide the tripod. That wasn't very graceful. All right, so what we got here is, of course, the laptop with Packlink running and it's acting like a POP3 server. Over here I have a WRT54GL router that's been reloaded with the HSMM-Mesh software, a 12 volt battery, and of course the email client running in the background. And over here to the left I have the other node with the bug out bag laptop and it's just running Thunderbird email client connected to the router, connected to a battery and what I'll do here is I'll turn the camera back over here and you can see the POP3 client there. And hopefully the glare isn't too bad. I'm going to actually go ahead and hit the send receive button over here. I have a draft message. And this PC is going to go through the mesh and send an email through the network and it'll be sitting in the inbox here. And I actually addressed this email to this computer so you can see here that an email came in, subject test, and now I'll go ahead and open up this email client down here. And I have a test email going the other way. We'll get that out. And you'll actually see that right there. That's actually sitting in the system now. 
And now we'll come over here to this inbox and we'll tell it to get new messages. And there's the new messages coming in. So there's no internet here. This is actually acting as an email server and it has its own client. And this laptop is just an email client. And the connectivity here is through the mesh. So we'll go back up to the board here. Disregard the top half, but in this configuration, this is what's happening. Email went out, came in here, went to the POP server, sat on that server until this email client actually checked for that email. And then I actually sent one out back out over this way. So what I'll do is go back down to the smaller laptop here and reopen that email client. And you should see an email come in. So let's see if we get that open. So we'll go down here and we'll check messages. And there we go. We downloaded one message that came over from the other laptop. And again, as you add nodes to this network, you could expand this out. Now because this is all amateur related and there's no encryption, it's all legal. Packling program can be downloaded from winlink.org and I've shown that in other videos where I do my HF radio email. But this is my introductory video, basic as it is, broadband communications for amateur radio. I don't know a lot about this. I'll keep playing with it. I did paint these things up because I plan to take them out to the field, make them look a little tactical there, and see what kind of distances I can get. Uh, because this is now an amateur radio and not a standard router, you can use external antennas. You can have higher power. I don't know what all the rules are. I just loaded the defaults right now. But I'll do some more research. But I really think it's a neat technology. And if you have a, a homestead location or a retreat where you have a lot of distance or neighbors that are really close and your internet goes down and they're amateur radio operators, you guys can still maintain communications with those folks using a high speed mesh and not be dependent on the internet. So as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with the Comms Prepper Helper. Bye Preppers! With a video on Broadband Data Communications for Amateur Radio or HSMM-MESH. Bye guys.